We're going to get started in about one minute, uh, but I do want to remind everyone that this is being live streamed. We have Finn family from all over the United States that are going to be watching this, and we also have family and friends that could not join us today, either because of travel or because of the pandemic. They, they didn't feel comfortable being here. So we do want to uh, uh, do want to remind you that if you do have a phone, if you don't mind putting on silence. <laughs> Because the last thing I want to do is get a bunch of emails tomorrow saying I couldn't hear this thing because of the phone's going off. So, uh, but we are about to get started, and I do want to welcome everyone here uh, for this very special event. All right, I have 10 a.m. Let's go ahead and we'll start the live stream. Good morning, I am Jason Smith, president here at Texarkana College. And I do wanna welcome everyone that's here in person and also who is joining us virtually through the live stream. We are here to honor the life and legacy of Dr. Shirley Finn. She is a former nursing instructor here at TC. Also, she was a director and division chair of Texarkana College Health Occupations Program between 1975 to 1995. Dr. Finn served TC faithfully for 29 years, from 1966 to 1995. In 20 of those years, she was our division chair. During that time, she made many contributions. She made many contributions to her profession, her community, and for social justice. She was known by many as a visionary leader. She was also a barrier breaker and very kind-hearted woman who cared for the physical and spiritual health of many. And those are all the things we want to celebrate this morning. Before we begin our ceremony, I would like to invite Reverend Father David Holt of St. James Episcopal Church, who will open us up in prayer. Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, our governor, you have blessed the human race with memory, reason, and skill. We give you thanks for the life, witness, and work of Dr. Shirley Finn, whom we remember and honor today in pursuit of both physical and societal health in our community. We pray, O eternal God, that you will bless this college especially the Shirley Finn Nursing Lab, that it may be a lively center for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain, that they may be the instruments of your son, the great physician. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'd like to begin by recognizing members of the Finn family who are here today with us. We have Mr. Ed Finn, who is Shirley Finn's husband. He's actually with us in this building, but he's actually watching it in, a, in a, another room being live streamed. We also have with us Mr. and, Mike, Mr. and Mrs. Mike Finn, who is... Ed and Shirley's son and daughter-in-law. We also have many of the immediate and extended family here with us as well, and also we have many that are watching virtually. We want to know, we want you all to know that we do welcome you all. Also joining us today, we have Jason Adams, who is our current CEO of Christus St. Michael's here in, uh, Jason, I saw you here. Where are you? Jason. Oh, sorry, Jason, <laughs> over here to my left. Uh, we also have joining us is we have Chris Karam, uh, who is a former. He's joining us virtually. He couldn't be here today, but he did want the family to know he is joining virtually. Uh, he did make a phone call to Ed, I believe, last week to let him know he couldn't make it, but he is joining us formally, uh, virtually. But the Christus St. Michael system is something that is very special and dear to Dr. Finn. She served on the board 
uh, for several years, and she was also the first African-American female to serve on that board for several years, another accomplishment that Dr. Shirley Finn had under her belt. We also have with us today, we have members of TC Board of Trustees who are joining us. We have our president, Kay Ellison. We have Derek McGarry, vice president. We have Ernie Cochran, George Moore, and Brad Carlo, and Leslie Ducolo. And without this board, this, this day would not have happened. So thank you, board. I would also like to recognize our TC second year associate degree nursing students from Instructor Penny's class that are with us today. They are, they are sitting around on the edges over here. These students truly do go above and beyond every single day and we are very proud of you. We know that there are a lot of tests, they're weekly, you study hard, you work hard, but we're very proud of you and because of that, TC has been named a top seven uh, nursing program in the state of Texas. So congratulations. <laughs> Another legacy from Dr. Shirley Finn. We also have with us today, we have Brad Norman, who is the Ellis County Sheriff with us joining today. So Sheriff, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> At this time, I would like to welcome our mayor of Texarkana, Texas, to come forward for a very special presentation, Mayor Bob Brueggemann. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, everyone. I want to uh, personally thank you all for the invitation of being here this morning. I do have a proclamation that I would like to share, but uh, before I do that, I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to reflect on my association with uh, Dr. Shirley Finn. I have very, very fond memories of, of Dr. Finn. It seemed like our paths crossed at the Regional Arts Center uh, downtown uh, for various types of events that were held uh, throughout the community over the years. And I recall that uh, Dr. Finn was a lady who always had a smile on her face. Uh, always dressed very, very nicely um, and was just a genuine person. She uh, took interest in what everyone had to say as far as their input. And I just uh, recall on the, on the great conversations that she and I had together over the years. And I think it's very, very proper and very fitting that we have this special ceremony today here on the campus at Texarkana College. As you all know, those who are in the nursing profession have really been put to the test uh, over the past year to year and a half with, with COVID-19, the pandemic in our, in our country. And we know that um, our resources in the healthcare industry have been stretched very thin, but it's an encouraging sign to see these TC nursing students here today, knowing that you're going into a profession that will certainly be valued and um, appreciated by all of our citizens. And so I commend you for having the interest in taking the time and the effort and all the hard work to uh, become nurses. It's greatly appreciated and it's greatly needed. At this time, I'd like to present to you a, a proclamation, a Texarkana, Texas proclamation, and the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas now more than ever, we must support and recognize nurses who work with courage and compassion under extremely challenging circumstances, whether it is global, national, or state health emergency, or routine daily care, nurses, nurses' vital contributions impact the health and well-being of our communities. And where Whereas the nursing program at Texarkana College began in 1956 as a result of encouragement and planning by the Board of Directors of Wadley Hospital, college trustees, and through financial support of the William Buchanan Foundation. The first class of vocational student nurses graduated in 1957, and by 1959, Texarkana College added the first accredited associate degree nursing program 
in the state of Texas. This program was a landmark achievement for Texarkana in that it was the first two-year program in Texas to receive accreditation from the National League of Nursing. And whereas many people and entities have contributed to the success of Texarkana College's nursing program through the years. However, one leader in particular served as a trailblazer for African American women to serve in, in administrative leadership roles within the institution of higher education and in the medical field. That person was Dr. Shirley Finn, RN, who served as Texarkana College's Director of the School of Nursing and Chair of the Health Occupations Division, spanning 20 years from 1975 to 1995. And whereas Dr. Shirley Finn, RN, was a visionary woman, exemplary nurse and a civic leader who devoted her professional life to the development of skills in nursing students and faculty at Texarkana College. Through Dr. Shirley Finn's leadership and legacy, Texarkana College's nursing program has flourished. Now, therefore, I, Bob Brigman, Mayor of the City of Texarkana, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 13th, 2021 as Dr. Shirley Finn RN Day. I extend my gratitude and appreciation to all nurses who serve our community, state, and nation with their skills, leadership, and passion for the well-being of others. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and have caused the official seal of the city of Texarkana, Texas to be affixed this 13th day of October 2021. I have signed the proclamation. It has been attested by Jennifer Evans, City Secretary for the City of Texarkana, Texas, and the city seal has been affixed to the proclamation. So once again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today to present a proclamation on behalf of our great city, and certainly hope that everyone has a great day, and my sincere appreciation to the Finn family. Thank you all for your contributions, and may God bless you. Amen. <laughs> I know Mr. Finn is watching us right now, but I believe he had a birthday. Was it two days ago? <laughs> yesterday, yesterday. Well, we have Ed Finn having a birthday yesterday, and now we have Dr. Shirley Finn having her Texarkana Day every day for the rest of our, you know, well, for as long as Texarkana will be here. What a special day. I better put this over here. Oh. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I would like to introduce to you Courtney Schulmeyer, our Dean of TC's Health Science Division, who will prov uh, provide an overview of our nursing programs and a little history of TC's success in training nurses all around our region. So, Dean Schulmeyer. I should have read the proclamation first because I'm going to say a few things that <laughs> you said already. Good morning. Um, on behalf of Health Sciences faculty and staff, we welcome you here to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Shirley Finn. Because of her vision, Texarkana has opportunities for individuals to complete their nursing education at multiple levels with extensive nursing career possibilities in our region of Northeast Texas. <clears throat> These opportunities serve a twofold outcome, improved availability for nursing education and a nursing workforce that improves the quality of care for members of our community. Currently in the Health Sciences Division, we are teaching 172 associate degree nursing students. We are also teaching 50 vocational nursing students. I would like to thank our 12 uh, associate degree nursing students for helping with us today and they will be leaving us shortly so they can return to their clinical learning assignments. We want to make sure you meet those learning outcomes. In addition to the nursing programs, Texarkana College also offers certificates and degrees in pharmacy technology and emergency medical technology. These programs produce pharmacy technicians, emergency medical technicians, and paramedics. In 1956, the vocational nursing program was established at Texarkana College. The development of the associate degree program followed, and it was the first of its type in the state of Texas. 
Then, in 1966, the associate degree program became the first to be granted national accreditation in Texas. Texarkana College has, edu <clears throat> excuse me, has educated thousands of nurses who serve to improve the health and well-being of the patients entrusted to their care. Before COVID-19 pandemic hit us, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimated the demand for registered nurses in Northeast Texas to increase by 16 percent between 2018 and 2028. This equates to more than 165 registered nurse job openings in East Texas each year. In our region, the mean annual wage for registered nurses is $68,000. The demand for vocational nurses is also increasing with an average of 83 newly created job opportunities each year in Northeast Texas and an annual wage for vocational nurses at $43,000 a year. When considering the low cost of education at Texarkana College, our nursing graduates certainly have a high return on their investment. To help meet the increased need for nurses in our region, Texarkana College is increasing enrollment in the Associate Degree Nursing Program and the Transition Program for vocational nurses who want to further their education and become a registered nurse. Our faculty is committed to providing exceptional instruction and support for students so they can attain their goal of becoming a nurse. We pride ourselves on our quality instruction and the percentage of our graduates who pass the National Nursing Licensure Exam on the first attempt. I am a proud graduate of the Texarkana College Associate Degree Program, and I am honored to lead all programs in the Health Sciences Division. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the accomplishments of Dr. Shirley Finn and to recognize the importance of the, and impact of the nursing profession. Thank you, Dean Shomar. Next, I have the privilege to welcome Lakia Jones, president of Kappa Xi Omega Chapter Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Dr. Finn's Greek letter affiliation. Mrs. Jones is a TC alum uh, and a highly acclaimed career educator now serving as the assistant principal, principal at Hope High School. Now, I, you can come on up, but I do want to say, Mr. Moore, you and I came from the K-12 world. I don't know why we can't recruit people like this to Texarkana. We need to start doing a better job, I think, money, recruiting. Money. But I've had the opportunity to meet her several times, and she's wonderful. So yeah. Glad to have you up here. Thank you. <laughs> to Dr. Jason White, Texarkana College Board of Trustees, the esteemed family of the late Dr. Shirley Finn. Dr. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Brueggemann, Mayor Brueggemann, TC's nursing program faculty and staff, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, international president and CEO, Dr. Glenda Glover, South Central Regional Director, Joya T. Hayes, members of Kappa Xi Omega Chapter, fellow platform speakers, and all in attendance. Good morning, everyone. It's no secret that our sorority sisters have been shattering and breaking glass ceilings since 1908. Among those trailblazers are Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, Shirley Sharp Finn, and the United States of America Vice President Kamala Harris, just to name a few. Though I was not fortunate enough to meet Dr. Finn in person, I can still boast about her grace, her class, sophistication, and her outstanding accomplishments with pink and green pride. In celebration of her achievement and excellence, I must acknowledge that she is nationally recognized as an Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated pioneering woman of distinction. These are fascinated women who have been active, visionary barrier breakers, seizing every opportunity to make a difference throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. Even after death, their empowering stories continue to inspire and will be shared in record books for years to come. Dr. Shirley Finn was recognized as Sora of the Year in 1991. She served dutifully in her various positions 
and offices, including the ninth president of Kappa Xi Omega Chapter in Texarkana from January 1st, 1999 until December 31st, 2000. She also dedicated her time and was actively involved in various committees, including the phenomenal Mother's Day brunch, on-track tutoring program at Dunbar and Theron Jones Elementary, and the Visual and Performing Arts Committee. I could go on and on and on, but I'm certain that you understand how Dirk, Dr. Shirley Finn perpetuated the purposes and the ideals of our sorority through her work and her community service. Will the lovely ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated please stand with me at this time. On behalf of the officers, the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Kappa Xi Omega Chapter in Texarkana, Texas, it gives me great honor to present this check for $500 as a donation to the Dr. Shirley Finn Memorial Scholarship here at Texarkana College as a token of our everlasting love and appreciation for this legendary Golden Soror. I would like to personally thank this committee for including us in this excellent and auspicious occasion. May God bless each of you and every one of you. Thank you so much. See what I mean, Mr. Moore? I do. I told you. Mr. Jones, thank you very much, Alpha Kappa Alpha Xi Omega uh, chapter. Thank you so much for the gift. And that does remind me, we do have a, we do have a link actually on our uh, website. Uh, we actually have a page dedicated to Dr. Shirley Finn. And on that page, you can make donations to that as well. So if there's anyone else interested in doing so, please do so. The next part of the program was definitely the most difficult part of for us to work on as we were developing the ceremony, and that was to decide who was going to be able to speak on behalf of friends and family. Uh, and so a lot of that fell on my shoulders. And there was a time, Michael, that you said if I ever did something and somebody questioned me, that you'd back me up. This may be one of those times because I had to make decisions. So, <laughs> well, thank you. But I do want to say that. Uh, there were several people who knew Dr. Finn. They knew her as a friend. They knew her as a church member. They knew her as a mom. And each one can give accounts of remarkable moments that she left an indelible mark on their life. It was tough for us to narrow down this list of uh, special people because so many people did love her and she loved so many in return. For today, however, it is my honor to welcome the following friends and family to speak about Dr. Friend and the way she impacted their lives. Today, we're going to have Dr. Denzer speak, Denzer Burke, the Reverend Father Richard Daly, Dr. Jim Presley, Mr. Don Shipp, and Mike Finn, Dr. Shirley and Edwin Finn's son. Dr. Burke, do you mind beginning us beginning, please? Thank you, Dr. Smith. First of all, I have to uh, give you a disclaimer. I am not speaking for Cap Alpha Psi, but I am speaking as a friend of the family. Today, we have gathered in this place at this time to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Shirley Fenn. Given the turbulent times in which we find ourselves, this occasion takes on an even greater meaning of hope for some of us. Coming from a single family home, a son, coming from a single parent home, Dr. Finn received bachelor's degree in nursing from St. Augustine College in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
And as you know, she later married Texarkana native Edwin Finn and moved to this part of the country during a period of social upheaval occasioned by the enactment of the Civil Rights Act. Demonstrations in places like North Carolina when this uh, young nurse arrived in Texarkana was very prevalent. However, when she came to Texarkana, she found a fairly peaceful community. However, this facade was shaken when this black registered nurse was employed at Watley Hospital, Texarkana Independent School District, and especially at the Miller County Health Unit. There she encountered subtle and often overt discrimination, which prompted Dr. Fenn, as she encountered these occasions, to become a quiet, soft-spoken agent of change in our community. Because it was important to her that she should be able to care for the health care needs of all patients, of all patients that needed her services. Later on, realizing the great need for more trained nurses in our area, Dr. Finn eventually became an instructor in the nursing department of Texarkana College. After a reorganization of the nursing program, Dr. Finn became a acting head and eventually full head of the nursing department. This promotion, without question, was historical for a person like Dr. Finn, for Texarkana College, and the community. Now apparently, the TC administration was so pleased with Dr. Finn's demonstrated abilities that they granted her a leave of absence which allowed her to earn a master's degree in nursing education from Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. This educational advancement gave Dr. Fenn the additional tools needed in her quest to make the student experience in the nursing department one of the best in Texas. And now you've heard about how she worked and made this program an outstanding program in the state of Texas. Now she worked, and those of us who knew her, she, we realized that she worked hours and hours and hours uh, fixing or trying to uh, write grant applications. And she often promoted the TC nursing program as she traveled throughout the state of Texas and therefore, the program at here at uh, Texas Indiana College became one of the well-known nursing programs in the state. Now, while she was doing all this, somehow she find, found time to work on a PhD and eventually complete the requirements for a PhD at uh, Novo University in Florida. Just as Dr. Fenn was an agent of change at Miller County Health Unit and the TC Nursing Department. So too was she an agent of change at St. James Episcopal Church, aided by Father Richard Allen and Mrs. Arthur, I mean, by Mrs. Arthur Temple. Now as a member of that church, she taught Sunday school and also served as a member of the vestry. As a matter of fact, her son, Michael, was baptized in St. James Church in a ceremony in which I participated as Michael's godfather. In addition, Dr. Finn became an agent of change when we, she and I, were asked to join the Christus St. Michael Board of Directors. And as you, as someone has already mentioned, this was definitely a change for the better for the St. Michael people. Because of Dr. Finn's efforts, young persons in our community can aspire to be not only the head of the nursing division, but perhaps the president of this college. Because of Dr. Finn's church membership 
it might have been easier for some members of St. James to accept presiding Bishop Michael Curry as the Episcopal national leader. Because of Dr. Finn's contribution, Christus St. Michael may have gotten a greater insight about the health needs of the minority community. This agent of change, life mattered. Dr. Shirley Finn's life mattered. And we are all better for having lived, for her having lived among us. As I said earlier, this, of, this event has a great or even greater meaning. Through its leadership, Texas County College today is making a statement that inclusion with recognition, inclusion with recognition is important. For this, Dr. Smith and your Board of Trustees, we thank you for honoring the memory and legacy of our friend, Dr. Shirley Fenn. Thank you. The uh, word legacy comes up today quite often. And when we think of the word legacy, sometimes we have the propensity to think of it in terms of something static or something that is a memorial from the past, but it's not. Legacy is something that is alive, something that is living. And the three aspects would like to just share with you about family, her profession, and faith. Her legacy lives on. Uh, I'm always very happy. I get a chance to take communion to a lot of people, but I always love taking communion to Mike's dad, to Ed. And he will always tell me about how smart and how wonderful Shirley was. Well, I know that Ed is watching. You were smart enough to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in that love that her legacy continues in family. Her love flowing through you, Mike and family, and grandchildren, and friends. You have a memory of her that is alive and that's vibrant, and that it continues. But most especially when you come together and you think and recall her, you know that she is right there. She's right there. In her profession, she inherited so many educational gifts, talents from others who were a legacy, if you will, for her. And she rises to giant proportions in the legacy that she leaves for her profession and for what we do today. When these new nurses go out and they're seeing their patients, don't you think Shirley's with them? Well, not like just because they inherit part of a scholarship or because they went to a lab, but that she is with them. When they tend at the bed with a patient in an office, Shirley's right there. She's right there. Most of all, in her faith. In our Episcopal tradition, in the liturgy for funerals, for requiems, the priest will say right before the consecration, for to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. through any of the difficulties, through all of the difficulties that she experienced with family, with maybe raising Michael, <laughs> the difficulties of 
being a member of the church and the struggles, the hatred that she had to face, she had a faith that life is changed. Life is different. And I think about that whenever I bring communion um, to your dad and to Ed. It's just not him and I. Shirley's there. She's right there. All the angels, all the saints, right there. I'm not exactly sure what would be the legacy she would want all of you to have. But I would hope and pray that the legacy that all of you will have and remember from this day is that where she is, you will someday be. To live and reign with the God she loved. And that was the motivation behind everything she did at St. James. May her prayers with those of the angels and the saints join with ours that we create even greater legacies to God's honor, to God's justice, and to God's glory. Dr. Shirley Sharp Finn and her husband Edwin were our friends for about 50 years. My wife Fran knew Shirley before I did through St. James Episcopal Church. I met them at St. James Day School one afternoon, Shirley and Ed and their little boy Michael. If you can imagine, Michael ever was a little boy. Our friendship became a bond that has endured ever since. Today, in my brief time, I'd like to focus on a few facts of Shirley's packed life in which there's so much that you wonder how she did it all, how a poor black girl, little girl in segregated North Carolina who worked her way through college scrubbing floors, how she grew up to do all she did. Her first stand out, but there's more. In 2013, the year of her unexpected death, I interviewed Shirley over a two day period. Eight years later, I selected from the interview the most prominent facts for the panels for her memorial. But there weren't enough panels to include everything, as you can imagine. Her extra educational credits help explain why she excelled. She took special training courses wherever she could find them, at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, University of Pennsylvania Medical School, and Boston University. She also served on the part-time faculty of the University of Texas at Arlington and Texas A&M University at Texarkana. She was the first black woman on the Christus St. Michael Hospital Board. Men had served before, and the first black vestry member of St. James, where she and Ed had been the first black members at a time Father Richard Allen was rector and facilitated their membership. Shirley had been an Episcopalian back in North Carolina years before. Then there was her love of music. I first learned this when she, Fran, and I drove to Dallas for the Red River Shootout around this time of the year between the universities of Texas and Oklahoma during the state fair. Mike was playing for the Longhorns. Ed had to remain in Texas County on business. 
Inside that swirling mass of humanity, prior to the game, you could hear music. Shirley responded immediately. There's a band, she said. Let's go listen. And we did. She listened rapidly. She loved it. That told me a lot about Shirley Finn and music. Thus, she was a woman of many facets who, luckily for us, dedicated her life to medicine and the training of the next generations. And we might thank Ed for finding her and bringing her to Texarkana. I believe that if Shirley were with us today, she would emphasize the philosophy that underscored everything she taught her students that they should never forget. The most important person in health care is the patient, she said, whether in the operating room, ward, or home. That was my friend, Dr. Shirley Sharp Finn, and that, folks, is why we're gathered here today to commemorate her life and work. May her light shine evermore to guide the future nurses who pass this way where she once lived, served, led, and inspired. Thank you. What a wonderful and humbling opportunity to be able to address everyone as a family friend and church member with Shirley Finn. And as I was thinking about what am I going to say after all these dignitaries and people talk about Shirley, what, what can I say? And it's, it's, it's all been said but the thing that kept coming to my mind is I, I prayed and meditated on it. How do I reflect this? It is take up your cross and follow me. And that's what she did. And she did it in such a humble way. I, after hearing all of this, and of course I'm familiar with it because I had known Shirley for so long. Uh, and known her as a young man uh, and was a youth leader. Mike was in my youth group. She was a, a dedicated mother. She cared for her family. She cared for other people. And the warmth in her heart was just something that was so obvious. And I've often wondered, you know, or to me, one of the best things about Christian witness is when you witness by your actions. People don't have to ask. They just see. And I could see her heart. Humble, unassuming. I never, when I was at St. James at first, now since she's passed, I know all of this stuff, but I never knew about all of this, all of these wonderful things that she was the first at doing. We talked about civil rights some and had some wonderful conversations. And there's some people at St. James that I think learned a lot about equality and civil rights from her very presence. This is the way that you do it. Take up your cross. So as a friend, I can truly say that she's a wonderful person. She was a wonderful mother, uh, a wonderful uh, uh, family member, wife, and gosh, the first that she did is St. James and in the community is just unbelievable. It's overwhelming. And I remember a time when I could wrestle a little bit with Mike Finn. 
that was early on in my association with him. That stopped pretty quickly. But one of the things that I do recall is that her concern about Mike and her love for her family was ever present. But you look for people in our community who are going to lead, and you look at people who don't have to say, I believe this, or I do this, watch them. Watch what they do. And I can't think of a better example of Christian leadership. And what a wonderful friend, Shirley Finn. Thank you. Morning. Today, I want to begin by introducing my daughter Kayla. Kayla is my mother's angel. She gave her that nickname, Kayla Angel. She nicknamed all my daughters, but she named her Angel. My father, who is in the building, um, recorded a message he wanted played today and added to the record. So before I speak, my daughter is going to play this message. Hopefully it gets out. If it doesn't, she'll read it. But um, this is my father speaking to you personally. Good morning. My name is Ed Finn. As you all know, I am Shirley Finn's husband. I have difficulty speaking due to Parkinson's disease. I will be using my device to speak for me since my speech production is hard to understand. I want to thank Dr. Smith, the president, the board, the faculty, and student body of Texarkana College for putting this affair on today. Also, I want to thank the mayor for his proclamation for honoring my wife and her legacy. I want to thank my family and friends for attending this event. On behalf of myself and my family, I thank you all for putting this program together. God bless you and God bless America. Before I begin, my father and I want to make sure that we thank some people. I was raised to um, give thanks to those who do nice things for you. So I want to begin by saying thank you to Dr. Denzel Burke, my godfather, Dr. James Presley, who I've known, who's known me since I was born, and Don Ship for taking the time you didn't have to, to come up today and speak about my mother the way you did. From the president of Kappa Xi Omega, you made my mother proud. To Reverend Kenneth Reed from Mount Grove Baptist Church, Father Richard Daly, Reverend Father David Holt from St. James Church, thank you for your blessings of the tree in the lab and today. I think you being here, I know my mother would be happy. President of the Board of Trustees, Kay Ellison, thank you for being a member that my mother, I know, would be proud of today. To the mayor of Texarkana, thank you very much for the proclamation you bestowed upon my mother. The family appreciates that. Tweety Nursery for donating the tree out front. They worked with me for over a year to get the proper tree. And it's one that I know my mother, she loved that type. So 
that's been going to be a lasting memory that she will she will look down upon every day. Special thank you to Susie Irwin, Director of Institutional Advancement and Public Relations. Where are you, Susie? Is she here? She was here a few minutes ago. A year ago, when my father and I drove to the campus to look at my mother's monument and we found it was no longer there. Hers was the first office we went to. And I remember Susie saying, I don't know what happened, Mike, but I'll find out. And she did. She started the ball rolling. Without her, we wouldn't be here today. Special, special thank you to Vice President and Board of Trustees Derek McGarry and Texas County College President Dr. Jason Smith. I know you two did not want to have recognition, but I'm going to recognize you anyway. <clears throat> Without you and your efforts a year ago, we wouldn't be standing here. And when I tell you Dr. Smith took my wrath, <laughs> those who know me know my family. Dr. Smith took my wrath. He was not the president when everything went wrong. He's just the man who fixed it. Thank you. Derek, I talked to your cousin, Alicia, and I asked her about you. And I asked Kim, who I grew up with, about you. And I asked Tank, who I respect their words more than anybody that they know because they grew up with me. And I asked them about you because I was skeptical. <laughs> I didn't know you, but I knew them. If their word about you was true, that was good enough for me, and you have done nothing to disappoint, brother. Welcome to the family. It's hard being a fan, but it's worth it. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you to those people first before I began, because I don't know, getting through the next part, how that's going to go. So you have to bear with me. I want to say hello to Uncle Claude and Eva, who are watching virtually. I want to say hi to cousin, his son, Claude, Greta, David, who are nieces and nephews. I want to say hi to daddy's sister. Gwendolyn, Felicia, Ronnie, who are online watching, and Reggie, his nephew, who is here today. Jasmine, my other daughter, who's at home. And sitting in the audience today is my grandson, mother's great-grandson, Jonathan, who, if we're talking legacy, is the legacy. It's going to be hard on him following in the footsteps of those who are already in front of him. I went over and over and over what I would say. I've torn it up, thrown it out, yelled at it, screamed at it, gone outside. And finally, I just decided I'd, I'd do much better just speaking from the heart. So I'm going to give you a few things that to me, sum up who my mother was. I live in snapshots now. I've been hit in the head once or twice, so <laughs> things come to me and leave. So if I forget anybody or leave somebody out, no, it's not personal. It's I'm just trying to remember as I go. My mother was a lot of things to a lot of people. She was a daughter to Martha, a daughter-in-law to Claude and Abilene. Those are who molded my mother from birth and when she got married. She was a wife to Edwin. She's a grandmother to Brittany, Kayla, Jasmine, a great grandmother to Jonathan, and a mother-in-law to my wife, Janet. She was a lot of things to a lot of people, but to me, she was just mom. 
I heard my godfather speak about the quiet dignity of my mother. And through her life, that's how she was, from church to work to all of that. But see, quiet dignity dealing with her husband, Ed Finn, and her son, Michael Finn, quiet wasn't going to get it. <laughs> my mother had courage. If she could deal with her husband, Edwin, and her son, Michael, nothing out in the world was going to get to her. The snapshots that I remember growing up were when the nursing department was in the old building and my mother taking me with her to the job as a young child. I would run through the halls and when mother started, the first thing she did, she had her right hand man, Linda Arnold, and they worked tirelessly. And I know because I was under the desk giving Linda fits as I'm running around, but those two ladies worked hard every day to make this program what it is today. Linda, we thank you as well. Don't think we don't. I remember that as a small child. I remember growing up, the courage that my mother, being told of my mother, I, you know, those who knew mom knew she was maybe 5'5". Five, five. She was very small and quiet voice. and. I think, and I look back and I'm going, my mother did what? To be told that my mother was so instrumental in the civil rights of this city, going to places, putting herself in harm's way, and I didn't understand it until I grew up and read the testimonial sent to her from the Justice Department that her, my father, and Dr. Burke were out there on the front lines making sure I had the opportunities to do what I do today. I remember growing up, I played baseball, I, and I loved baseball. But my father walked in one day when I was a sophomore and told my mother, Shirley, um, your son's getting big in case you didn't notice. <laughs> He's going to play football. Now my mother, who's a doctor and a nurse, looked at my father and she did not want that at all. She fought it until my father convinced her that, no, he's going to do this, and away I went, um, playing ball as a junior at Liberty Alo High School. That's where I met Tank, who played at Texas High. <clears throat> Love you, brother. I remember playing ball at Liberty Alo and it was, it was fun. It was, it was, I found who I wanted to be. I'm a type A personality like my father. Before I get too farther into what I'm saying, I want to take this opportunity to tell my father, I love you. If you haven't heard me say it, Hear me now. I remember that game that Dr. Presley was talking about because I was blessed enough to continue my playing. I remember that game. Um, my mother was there. My grandmother was there. 90,000 other people were there. And for some kind of way, as a freshman at Texas, uh, my mother heard my voice from 90,000 people. And I remember getting injured in that game to some kind of way. My, uh, I was bleeding, and we were wearing white pants. And as I'm coming off the field in my type A Ed Finn voice, I'm giving the other team everything I can think of. And it wasn't pretty. I thought I had a good game as a freshman. And I remember leaving, going out the tunnel, and there was my mother, and there was my grandmother. And my grandmother gave me a big hug. My mother looked at me and she said, Michael, you had a good game. But did you have to use so many curse words? <laughs> that was my mother. She was a beautiful person, both inside and out. When I say she had dignity, she did. She loved being an AKA more than you know. 
She loves St. James more than you know. But I also know about the courage of my mother. Learning when she was pregnant with me, my mother and father lived in the apartment at St. James and them being asked to leave because of the color of their skin. I am who I am today because of my family. A strong, proud African-American male who was trying to pass that on to my, grand, to my grandson. The last snippet that I can give you on her courage was as I again, again, if you know my father, you know he is a very strong person. And he made sure his son was just as strong as he is. I'm not proud to say that my father and I one time got cross with each other to the point where he asked me to leave his house. It wasn't as calm as I'm telling you now. And if you can imagine my father back in those days being as robust and strong as he is and forceful as he is, and his son thinking that he was a man as well, neither one of us backing down, neither one of us giving a quarter or an inch. My mother had a choice. She could grab her husband or she could grab her son. Because if she didn't grab one of us, it was not going to be a pretty ending. I remember I went out to my car. Like I said, it's not a pretty story. I went out to my car, and I grabbed my, my daughter and my ex-wife at the time, and we were heading back to Dallas. And I remember being so angry. I was so angry. And before I could turn around to go back in the house to continue the fight with my father, my mother grabbed me. Her being as small as she was, if I wanted to get away from her, that would not have been a difficult chore. Not wanting to hurt her, calm my anger. I'm sad to say my father and I lost four years of time because we didn't speak. But my mother never gave up on either one of us. She worked on him, and she worked on me. And eventually, we got back together, and we are still together today. I wouldn't be here today without my father. And 2013 was the best year and the worst year of my life. One of those. I started working at the Ellis County Sheriff's Office. My boss is here today. Thank you for coming, Sheriff. And I was on top of the world in January. You know, uh, Janet and I, um, we had Mama and Daddy there, and the grandkids were there, and it was the best time of my life. So finally, I found some place to be that's like home. Like I said, I'm a type A personality, so working at the sheriff's office, you're going to pay me to do what I love to do most? Thank you for that, but it's home. However, that's the same year when I got off of work one evening. My father called me and told me, Mike, come to the house. They live seven minutes away from us. And I could tell by the tone my father spoke to me because he never, I can never remember my father being scared. The tone of voice he spoke to me that night, I knew something was wrong. I got there and my mother was laid back on the bed and by doing what I do, I could tell yeah, we have trouble, but I, also, I, saw, I could also tell that she was no longer with us. What made my mother, my mother was gone. That was the hardest day, and if it wasn't for the Ellis County Sheriff's Office, I wouldn't be here today. So through prayer and work and Janet, I'm thankful to be here, thankful to see so many friends and family. You can pick your, you, you, you're born into your family, but sometimes family is more than just about blood. I have many brothers, a lot of them aren't here today, but they are here with me. 
I could name names, KO, 15 Tormented Souls, my line brothers, Spring 90th, Dirk, Duvall, KO, KD. I could name a bunch, but the ones I see here today mean the most. A year ago, Dr. Smith, we started a journey. A year ago, we started a journey. My family and I want to thank you for allowing us to finally bring Mama home. She worked her whole life. She loved this place. She loved this city. She loves this family. And now, finally, she's home. Thank you for those who are here in attendance and who are viewing online. Thank you. Saying thank you, though, is not enough. So what I'm going to do is continue to honor my mother by doing the best that I can. And I would ask you to do the same. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes she, and I remember she, she telling me sometimes, Michael, you're not going to always have it easy, but if you keep fighting, if you keep pushing, don't give up, you'll win. Whether somebody tells you you will or you won't, doesn't matter. As long as you do the best you can do, you'll win. Today, before I got up, I, I hugged Reverend Reed and he whispered in my ear, He's a frat brother of mine, of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. And we're taught to see it through. Thank you for reminding me of that. I could be here all day telling you about Mama. Those who knew her, I don't have to convince you of her. She's still here today. So please view the wall, remember her, honor her, and think about it from time to time. Thank you. Michael, thank you so much for those. I know I know that was very difficult and emotional for you to share those, but we do want to say thank you for sharing. And all those that friends that came up to speak about Shirley, thank you. You know, Michael, I, I do remember when I got the phone call from Susie that uh, the, the memorial tree and plaque that we had for your mom had been uh, removed because we had new construction going on. I thought, oh my goodness, how could we let that happen? But you know what? And you and I have talked about this. I think it's been a blessing because how many people have learned about the legacy of Shirley Finn because of that? I didn't know the legacy of Shirley Finn. I do now. And the hundreds and hundreds of other people know that. And more will happen because of that as well. I also remember... I know our trustees you know, many times talking about this and how do we do, what do we do we, with Susie and our leadership team, our VPs and our deans, what do we do? What constantly came back were, what would Shirley do? You know, kept trying to keep, the, how do we keep this on Dr. Finn? How do we keep, and you know what it came down to? Let's do the right thing and do it with class. And we hope, that ha hope, we hope you find that we did the right thing and we did it with class. At this time, I would like to welcome to the podium two of our Board of Trustees who have helped make this tribute possible. And that is Mrs. Kay Ellison, our President of TC Board, and Mr. Derek McGarry, Vice President of Board of Trustees. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Smith. I know we've been here a while, but I do want to welcome our Texarkana community 
folks, uh, TC family, and the honored friends and family of Dr. Shirley Finn. And I asked Dr. Smith if I might say a few words today because I knew Shirley Finn. And I am a nurse. And I'm just trying to summarize a few things going back to Dr. Shomar's, uh, Dean Shomar's uh, statement. When I was a nurse, a long, long time ago, I was in Arkansas, and my salary for the year was 7000 So now we're up to 68000 <laughs> and, and I moved here in 1977 uh, with my husband, one child, pregnant, and a baccalaureate degree in nursing. So I, I was an RN, having just been making 7000 a year. I knew it'd be a few years with my boys before I could get them in preschool and that I could continue nursing. When that day came, I knew I could not do hospital-based or clinic, clinical-based, that I had to do something for the community that would give me the flexibility with having two little children. That's when I came out to Texarkana College. And that is when I met Shirley Finn. I said, there's got to be something that I can do with my few hours that could be of some service in the nursing capacity. We had several meetings. I learned all about her family, never met them, learned all about them. And through those meetings, she had such insight. She had so many hopes and dreams. And she said, let's come up with something different. And we did. My husband was uh, amazed, I think, at first, but we came up with a course of nutrition, exercise, and mental health with the Texarkana, Texas Fire Department. And he said, you, you've got firemen? I said, yes, on the campus, the firemen come to take my course. And it worked in my flexibility, and I felt great about it. We had so many meetings because I was on campus, or so many opportunities to get to know each other that our love of the humanities and theater and things crossed over into that. She was also an inspiration for me to go back to school. Came back to Texarkana College, got my degree in drama. Um, and through this, just backtracking a little bit, I know a lot of you here know that my father was a physician. My mother was an OB supervisor. But growing up in the 50s and 60s, um, women were kind of told they could, they could be really good secretaries, they could be good school teachers, and they could be good nurses. I listened to that, and I thought, I can be a, I can be a good nurse. I didn't ever get the information or this big push in education that I could be a superintendent or I could be a CEO or I could be a doctor, or I could be dean of a nursing school. I never got that, so I didn't continue on that path. Anyway, somehow, Dr. Finn never got the memo, because she kept on. She got her education, and she kept on, and she kept on doing everything. She didn't get the memo. At first, some of us got, as being females, you probably can't do that. You, you probably can't. I think you're, you've reached your level. She didn't get that. So at this point, I want to say that we are so proud of Dr. Finn for the nursing department, for Texarkana College, what she did, for Texarkana, and for women of all color in our community, what she did. It's great. And I'm real proud to say I was, and I am, a Shirley Finn professional friend. <laughs> we were professional friends, and she was such a trailblazer. I'm going to keep it short, and now I'd like to introduce Derek McGarry, Vice President of our Board of Trustees. Thank you, President Ellison. Good morning, everyone. To the Finn family, uh, my family now since I've been inducted as an <laughs> honorary member, and I want to say that the, that the honor is mine. Uh, Mayor Brueggemann other distinguished guests that are here today, family and friends. It is a privilege to stand here today and speak about a woman who left such a legacy, not only for this institution, but for so many lives she touched publicly and privately across this great country. 
I never had the honor of meeting Dr. Finn, although it's been a pleasure getting to know Mr. Ed Finn and Michael and hearing stories about their wife and mother. The more conversations I had with the family and the more conversation I had with Dr. Finn's friends and colleagues and extended family, and the more I personally researched Dr. Finn's life work, it made me realize that this day that we're having today is long overdue. However, in the spirit of the kind woman Dr. Finn was, a humble, dedicated servant to her family, to her career, and to her faith, I'm reminded of something my great-grandmother used to tell me years ago. And she said, when I'm gone, you won't have to say much. Let the work I've done speak for me. So in that same spirit, my comments will be brief. Many great things have been said about Dr. Finn this morning, and she is a woman that is so well deserving of this honor. But if there is any lesson I believe that should come out of today, and if there's something that I believe Dr. Finn would say if she were here today, or as she looks down upon us, I think the lesson that she would want us to learn is what are each one of us doing to build our own legacy while we're here on earth? Each one of us has unique talents. Each one of us has unique abilities. And we can utilize those abilities to make our own impact in our own communities, wherever we're from. And most importantly, we can touch someone else's life by doing a little good for somebody every single day. That's what she would want us to learn. That's what Dr. Finn did, and she would want us to go and do the same. So again, it's a pleasure to speak with you today on behalf of this wonderful institution that has touched so many lives because of people like the humble, gracious woman we honor today. May God bless you all, and may God continue to bless the legacy of Dr. Shirley Finn. Thank you very much. You know, today's remarks really underscore the impact she had on so many individual lives, but it also underscores the impact that she had on our nursing profession. Our community, her community, our college, her college, our state, her state, our nation. She served on national boards as well, and also her family. She's done so much, and she did it in just one lifetime, and it's still amazing, the impact she continues to have. As an institution, Texarkana College would like to announce several ways we will ensure Dr. Finn's legacy will be carried through, and it will be carried throughout our program and on our campus. Earlier this morning, we met with a Finn family to dedicate the tree memorial, which is down below. If you have not seen it, we encourage you to see it in front of our health occupation building here. In addition, to ensure her Empower legacy is carried on through future generations, the existing Dr. Shirley Finn Nursing Scholarship managed by the Texarkana Found, uh, TC Foundation will now be the largest and most prestigious nursing scholarship awarded to students pursuing vocational nursing or associate security nursing credentials and honor, honors cords will be presented at graduation to scholarship recipients. I think that deserves a round of applause. In addition, as part of the curriculum within the Health Occupations Division, the high standards of academic excellence and leadership established by Dr. Finn for nursing students will be emphasized within the nursing curriculum. Finally, as a lasting tribute, Texarkana College is proud to dedicate the Nursing Skills Lab in memory of Dr. Shirley Finn. This lab serves as the training nucleus for nursing students, all students, where practical, critical, hands-on training takes place every day on this campus. It is only fitting 
that vitally important learning environment, this vitally important learning environment be dedicated to the legacy of eg excellence established by Dr. Shirley Finn. In closing, I want to invite Reverend Kenneth Reed, pastor of Mount Grove Baptist Church, to come forward and provide a blessing of tributes and dedication of the Nursing Skills Lab in memory of Dr. Shirley Finn. Reverend Reed. I almost said, let the church say amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank my brother, Michael Finn, for allowing me this opportunity to be a part of this great and wonderful occasion. The word of God says this, they that, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let us pray. Lord God, we first of all say thank you. Thank you for the life of Dr. Finn. Lord, we're gathered here today because of her work, her love, not only for you, God, but for others and family. And God, as we dedicate this unto her today, for her today, Lord, let it not just stop here. Let the love that she shared with others, let it also keep going. Let this be something to remind us that we all have something to live for that we have a purpose in life, and that is to serve others with kindness and with love. Let these tributes, let this memorial that we're doing today, this tribute once again, God, be something that we shall always remember and bring a smile on our face and inspire us to do more than we're currently doing. And Lord, we say thank you for the Finn family. We thank you for TC. We thank you all those that are involved to make this happen. And God, we celebrate now. What's to come is better than what's been. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend Reed. So in closing, one of the things I do want to remind you of, you each are invited to attend the tour of the new Dr. Shirley Finn Nursing Lab. Also, for those of you that are viewing online, we do, if you click the link titled Skills Lab Virtual Tour and More at Texarkana College, you will see two videos. One of them is a uh, video, a tour of the Skills Lab, and then we also have one of Texarkana College plus the Skill Labs that's also embedded into that video as well. So at this time, I do want to say thank you again to all of our distinguished speakers and to the Finn family. Uh, I hope this does do the things that we set out to accomplish, and that is to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Shirley Finn, do the right thing, and do it with class. And with that, we'll adjourn, and you're all welcome next door. Thank you.